Hello folks, Gnomecode here, back with the next episode. I've been reading all your awesome suggestions for what should I add to the series, so after careful consideration of the options... I found the perfect idea. But wait, I hear you say, isn't that actually referring to the last series? Well, details, shmeetails. On with the video! Okay, so we're continuing where we left off with this kind of maze thing. Although I've repositioned it a little bit to add some little room in, in between. And we're going to add in some doors. So I'm going to add in a part and sort of reposition it to a sort of door shape. Now I went for the wood texture here, which can be a risky business, as anyone who's ever seen the wood reviewer on Twitter will be aware of who will incessantly complain unless you fix your wood grain to be in the correct direction. So once my wood grain direction was suitably fixed, I then grouped them together into a model and then added an extra part which could function as our keyhole and even added on a lock decal to make things look suitably jazzy. Finally, once the masterpiece was complete, it was time to add in the script. Okay, so we're just gonna start off by creating a variable for the model itself. This just tells it that whenever we refer to door model, we're meaning the parent of this script. The next thing you want to do is you want to detect whenever anything touches the keyhole. So we can say door model dot keyhole, seeing as that's what I've named the part. And then I want to detect when anything touches it. So we say dot touched and connect it in to a function, which is going to take as a parameter hit. And that hit will equal whatever is the thing that is touching it. So what do we actually want to do here? Well, we want to detect uh, when something touches it and then we want to open the door. And there's a few ways of doing this, but the simplest way of all would probably be just to destroy the model entirely. So whenever the door is touched, let's just destroy it. Let's see what that looks like. As soon as I touch the part, the door is going to open. And there we go, we can walk in. Now, that's rubbish for several reasons, isn't it? One. Um, it's not very exciting, and two, well, I can just open it automatically. What we really want is some kind of key. So let's go ahead and create a key for ourselves, shall we? So we added in a cylinder, and then a second one negated to create this ring-type object with the union tool. Since we want this key to function as an item that players can actually carry, we need to rename the part to handle, with a capital H, and then place it inside of a tool object so the player can actually carry it around. Once I've done this, I then place the tool into starter plaque so the player will then spawn with the item. I've got the tool down here, and when I press 1 to select it, we then have the key in our hand. Now, the positioning isn't quite right on it, so what if we go into our character name code and we select the tool, and you'll see there's these different grip options grip forward, grip position, grip right, grip up, and so on, and we can adjust them and the key will shift position. There's probably a better way of doing this. Maybe there's a plugin or something, but I just kind of do this by trial and error until I find the kind of position that I want. And then I go from there. And now I've ended up with something that looks a bit more like a key. Oh, I'm <laughs> being killed by the teddy. So the next thing we need to do is we want this key to actually interact with this keyhole that we've added onto the door. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into our script and instead of just instantly destroying it, we want to check first. Okay, so we're going to check if hit.parent, and we can check if it is a tool, okay? And we want to check if the, we can say, we can check if it's called key, shall we? So we say if hit.parent.name equals equals key, then we'll destroy it. How about that? And we're actually going to need to name our key. So if we go down into starter pack here, and instead of just having it named tool, we'll rename it key. So now when we run the game, and I've got to run away from the teddy here, but if we run up to this door, it's not going to open. <laughs> we'll keep running away from the teddy. And he's got a bit confused, but we'll use our key on the door, and then it's going to open. What are you doing, teddy? What are you doing? Maybe we'll have to fix that at a later point. 
So now we've got it working with a key, but it's still a bit boring just having the doors disappear. So how about we have them swing open, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename each of these doors first of all. I'll rename this one right door and rename this one left door. And then I'm gonna press Control D, which duplicates it. And then I'm going to rotate it round where I want the open door to appear, okay? So I want it to move to this position. Let's see, over here. Something like that's probably a good position. So we'll rename that left door open. And the same for the right door. Now we don't want to actually be able to see these parts, so I'm gonna select both of them. I'm gonna set transparency to one and turn can collide off so we won't be able to walk into any invisible walls or anything. Now all we need to do is go back into our script and we want to move them from their current position to the position of the open position. <laughs> so we're gonna use something called a tween, which allows us to slowly shift from one position to another. It's essentially like creating an animation for a part. So to do this, we're gonna use tween service. Then we need to create a tween info which contains all the information, okay? So this will be local or tween info equals tween info dot new. Okay, so this is a function and it contains several parameters of what we want our tween to look like. So the first one is how long we want it to be. So I want it to only last about one second. I'm gonna press comma for the next value. And you notice as I do this, I get uh, all the different parameters displayed to me. So you can see the next one is enum.easingstyle. Okay, so enum.easingstyle. I press dot and then you can see the different options. And so if you just use the linear one, that's a straightforward movement from one position to the next. Uh, comma, next one, which is enum.easingdirection. We'll put this to out. Uh, then the next thing is the amount of times you want it to repeat. I don't want it to repeat at all, so I just put zero. Then the next thing is, do you allow it to reverse? This is true or false. I don't want it to reverse, so I put false. And then delay time, I don't want a delay either, so I put zero. Now these are all just parameters for the function, so you could just have them all on one line like this, but it ends up as quite a long line, as you can see. So I like to space it out like that onto different lines, makes it a bit easier to read. Now we've created this tween, door tween info. What we need to do is actually go and create that tween, okay? So we do this by saying local door tween equals, and then we say tween service create, and this takes two parameters. The first one is the object that we want to do it on. So we want to do this on the left door first. So this would be door model dot left door. Then we need to give it the actual tween. So that would be door tween info. And then finally you give it the position or the property sorry that you want to change. So we want to change the C frame which is kind of a combination of position and also rotation, among other things. So we put this inside these curly brackets here, which is a table, and we're gonna say C frame equals, and then we need to get the C frame of that open door position, okay? So seen as we're doing the left door, we'll say door model dot left door open dot C frame, okay? And then we want to do this for both doors. So we can just copy this line down onto the next line and change left door with right door and right door open. And then, well, we've called them both door tween. So we should put really, uh, is it right door tween? Sorry, left door tween and right door tween. And then all we have to do inside our actual function here is instead of destroying the model, 
what we'll do is we'll say left door tween play and then we'll play the right door tween okay so these as you can see they're very much like animations so now when i hit play i can walk up to my door here nothing's going to happen i'll whip out my key and then when i touch the keyhole part we're going to see them animate open like so and we need to get rid of this block don't we so what if we go back into our script destroy it so we can say door model dot keyhole destroy okay and then let's see if we can make that animation a bit more fun so instead of doing a linear one we could use something like the bounce so now when i open the door they're going to sort of swing open and bounce back and forth which makes it a bit more fun doesn't it So how about we have some color coded keys so we could make this uh what we're going to do is we're going to add in a color value okay a brick color value and we'll name it key okay and the value is going to be well the value is going to be bright yellow and then inside the script we'll make the keyhole color to match whatever that value is so if i just click run can see it turns yellow and then we're going to add as a condition into the script that the color of the key needs to match the color of the keyhole so we can say and hit dot brick color equals equals door model dot key dot value and how about we create a few of these so we can copy that give these different types of keys as well so this is going to be a let's have a bright red and then this one is going to be a blue key okay so where is this one it's going to be bright blue so I click run hopefully you'll just see yep they'll change their different color codes and then I just need to add some keys as well don't I so instead of having key appear straight inside my a starter pack let's put it inside the workspace shall we so once it's in the workspace i could duplicate it and give each one a different color to match the doors we've just set now we've got ourselves a little map let's go ahead and give it a try I haven't got any keys so i can't open that door let's see if we can go and find a key we've got a blue key so the blue key won't open the red door so we've had to walk all the long way around we've found a yellow key you can pick that up the yellow key won't open the blue door, but the blue key will. We'll slide that one open. We can take our red key and the red key with well, the yellow key, we can use to open the yellow door. And oh, there's the teddy. And if we get our red key round and over to this door, we can open it up. Now, one last thing, maybe we should add in some sounds. Thankfully, this is super easy. So all we need to do is go to the toolbox, find a suitable sound, and then click to add it inside my door script. Once I have the sound, all I need to do is reference it and then tap to play just before the tweens. Of course, not forgetting to then copy my changes over to the scripts, and then we're ready to roll. Now we can load in, grab ourselves a yellow key, and open the yellow door, and we get a very satisfying crunchy sound. I'm going to try and run away from the teddy here. Oh no, I can't get into the door. Ah, I have to go the long way around. Red door, boom. Open sesame. And we've got a blue key now. Open up the blue door, boom. Okay, there we have it. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, it's not quite a completed game yet. We're maybe going to have to find a way to jumble up these keys, but we have got a system that can open up each key with a respective door. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe for the next part in the series, and I'll catch you guys later.